Uh, hi everyone, great to see you again. It's the 4th of August, Tuesday. It's a beautiful day today. I hope you are thoroughly enjoying it yourself. Today I'm going to do the, the video message in two parts. Part one is about a range of things happening around our church, including the World's Missions Conference. And part two is about church life over the coming few weeks. So part one, uh, it's great to have Joe with me today. Uh, World Missions Conference starts this Saturday night, in fact, the 8th of August, because we have our guest speaker starting with us on the 9th, which is the Sunday, Simon Gilham. Uh, but on Sunday, you might have heard Langdon talk about huddles, and I, I thought it'd be great to actually talk to Joe a bit more about, Joe, help us understand what is a huddle and what are you asking us to do? Yeah. I think uh, in this season, as we're, you know, over the fourth month of not being able to meet together as we did beforehand, it's getting perhaps harder for some people to engage with church and Christian life. It's getting harder to participate and, uh, and to connect. And so the idea of huddles is that we are basically gathering. If we believe that church is a gathering of believers, a huddle is that on a smaller scale. So in Hebrews 10.25, you know this verse, it talks about let us not give up in the habit of meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let's encourage each other and even more as the day is approaching, and isn't that true? And so while we can, what we can do at the moment is we can gather, we can have 10 people in your home, you can gather in groups of 20 outside, so what we can do that, let's do that. If we value community, if we feel that uh, gathering with believers helps promote our faith, because I really do think it does. Uh, if connecting and engaging together does help grow us as Christians, I think we need to give our energy to that. And so we're looking at church, you know, maybe for the rest of the year being pretty different. We want to give it extra emphasis and really encourage people. We're getting on a thing here about huddling together. And so that may be getting a bit out of your comfort zone and it may be getting off the couch because we've gotten pretty comfortable in the last few months. And we actually really want you to consider who haven't you seen for a few months? Who haven't you um, connected with? Yes, there's your usual friends, there's your life group. But maybe beyond that, who is someone that you could reach out to and invite over to your house to share a meal and pray together or come over and watch church together? For the missions dinner this Saturday night, uh, well, normally we'd have in this auditorium, we'd have lots of chairs mm. and tables set up and our potluck dinner. But we can still do that in homes. So Tim and I, we're having another family over who we haven't seen really for months uh, to come over, share a meal, and then watch that together. So I'd really encourage you to do that. We've actually, we've set aside, sorry, Anne, I'm going to keep talking. <laughs> On the 20, 22nd and 23rd of August, that's only three weeks away, we've set aside a particular weekend that we're going to call the Great Huddle. And so even though we want this concept to be for many weeks and months ahead, this is a particular weekend where we're saying, okay, everyone, let's give energy, look around, see if you can set aside a particular time on that weekend, Saturday night, Sunday brunch plus church, whatever, and invite a family or some other people or a, you know, up to 10 in your house, meet in a park, go to a picnic. What can we do that particular weekend to kind of really launch and drive home this concept? And then we want you to send in photos and let's encourage each other with all our gatherings and huddles over that particular weekend and beyond. Thanks, Joe. That's really great. In fact, uh, as you hear Joe speak about that, what it reminds me of is getting back to that great word hospitality. Maybe in the last season of church life, five to ten years, we've actually forgotten how to engage in that way. This season is reminding us of the value of gathering, clearly not just in a church service on a Sunday, but outside of that. And that's so powerful because the encouragement and the growth that comes from that is pretty profound. So please connect with that. Uh, if you need information, contact Adele. Let Joe know, email or something, but that'll be great, and especially in light of the World's Missions Conference coming up. Uh, don't forget, with the World's Missions Conference, uh, our guest speaker, Simon, is starting with us on Sunday. Each day of the conference at 7.30 on Fig Tree TV on our YouTube channel, you can actually see an update from one of our mission partners. So that's from Monday right through to Friday, 7.30 every night. Get some people around then to watch it and to get some updates. Then again, on Saturday, the 15th of August, really important, Joe, uh, we've actually got at four o'clock, we're going to have a church-wide prayer meeting for all our mission partners and what's it. going on. On Zoom. On Zoom. So look, we'll provide the link, get connected to that. It's going to be a great time. Look, again, thank you so much for all that you're doing. Last part, look, if you could, Anglicare, we're really serving so many people in that way. We need a few more items. If you could bring them in long life milk, very important and a whole range of cereals. Uh, I know I might have certain favourites, but if you can spread that around. Not just no-name cornflakes. Not no-name cornflakes. As valuable as no-name cornflakes are though, Joe, if you could do that, that'd be great. Keep bringing the food in and some frozen meals. I really appreciate all you're doing. 
that's part one. Big session coming up now about part two. Take care. Thank you, Joe, for sharing. So I hope you've grabbed your cup of tea or coffee and you're sitting down. I just want you to be aware of a, a number of things that are happening around us. I uh, really appreciate Joe jumping in to help us understand huddles are. And also, please can I remind you, in previous years, we've produced a book like this for the World's Business Conference. We're not doing that this year. All the information is online, especially in regards to giving. And so can I encourage you, there's a range of five projects there, the same projects as previous years. We are going to balance out the giving across all the projects based on a percentage uh, total. And so Rhonda and I are going to give to the pool. There's an option of giving to the pool for mission funding or to allocate funding to special groups. Because uh, Langdon's done a great video on giving, which you'll find very helpful. Because we don't know the condition of everyone in terms of their finances and their giving capacity, we've decided to just make it available to put it in the pool so we can allocate the funds accordingly. So watch out for that. Joe also just mentioned too, look, if you're keen to be invited somewhere or to host a few people and you're not sure who or how to do it, just contact Jo. She would only be too happy to help you actually work through that. So that's, uh, that's great. Coming up again this Sunday, but really over the coming weeks and months, it's a great chance to catch up. Brothers and sisters, uh, it's Tuesday, as I said, 4th of August. It's about, what time is it, Greg? 2.30. That's when I'm recording this message, and so I expect to hear some more information today. But here's what I know as at today. You heard over the weekend that we are now reduced down to having one singer only in, in the auditorium. Uh, we've done that. That'll impact our services. But secondly, and more importantly, I'm expecting to hear the following this afternoon from our Archbishop. It'll go something like this, that from this Sunday, with any gathering in-house... The request is going to be that all those who gather with the 100 limit, and you can still register online for that service this Sunday, church, us, are going to provide you with a mask, and we're going to ask all those who come to wear a mask as they sit in the auditorium. That directive, you can call it, is going to impact uh, those from the age of 12 up, Children between the age of 4 to 11, it'll be an option for parents as to whether they wear masks. It's not uh, a requirement for those children under the age of 4 at this stage. And it's tied in with gatherings where there are all ages, and that's what our two services, 10 o'clock and 5 o'clock, have been, all ages. Uh, that's hard to hear. I had hoped a few weeks ago to provide some incentive about gathering. I feel the weight of this, the team does, I'm sure you do. I absolutely know how much I value connecting with people face to face. And so with all the weight of what's going on, and I've just heard that, of course, Victoria have closed down all places of public worship. It wouldn't surprise you and I about that. Growing concerns in New South Wales. So here's what we'll do for this church at Fig Tree for this Sunday. We're going to have our broadcast 8 o'clock service as usual. Uh, 10 o'clock will be live streamed as usual. And you can gather on site at 10 o'clock and gather on site at 5 o'clock. We'll provide masks. Certainly bring your own mask if you have them. But it'll be a condition upon being part of our worship service that we all wear masks. Probably the only people who won't have to wear a mask will be the singer, the preacher, Maybe the Bible reader, maybe the prayer. I'll have to get clarity on that. But after this Sunday, brothers and sisters, with all that's going on around us, and yes, this can change even this week. In fact, I won't be here this Thursday, so you're going to have to take this as the message for the week. We're going to go back online only from Sunday, the 16th of August. It just seems to me that in the current climate and with all that's going on around us, it's just getting far too hard to keep bringing people into the space. As safe as it is, and, and I really am impressed with the ministry team and how much they've done, and as sad as it is to say it, because uh, it certainly hasn't been my hope, as you know, you've heard from me for a long time now, and it's not my desire, but with all things considered, with what's going on around us, and it shouldn't surprise you that more than likely... 
Next week, I'll say to you that this will probably be for the remainder of Term 3. And that means we'll start considering what Term 4 looks like. I want to make sure that you have clarity about that. So this Sunday, last chance to gather physically on site for quite a while, wearing masks, bring your own or we'll provide them. And then from then on, from the 16th of August, it's going to be all back online again with no on-site present. Uh, sad news, but that's the best decision I think we can make. I think it's the most appropriate decision too with all that's going on around us. Uh, also for our ministry team, it helps plan. And really, it reminds me that we really have to embrace our current climate and embrace the digital world and do the best we can to provide really effective online services and ministries. Really thankful for last Sunday what Greg did, uh, not just the service, the singing, but indeed the great item that was there that captured the truth of Habakkuk 3 from Rachel Jones. It was a wonderful way to engage. So that's happening. Uh, and I know many of you might find that hard to hear. It's tough to hear. Brothers and sisters, it's tough to say. So where do I go? What do I do? Look, if you're struggling right now, the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, it's in the Gospels. The Lord's Prayer is a great place to go because it's meant to be a daily prayer. It's the prayer that our Lord taught us. What's it say? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven those who've sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Uh, it's Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 6. It's just a great reminder. It's a daily prayer. And of course, for me, yeah, I could say this because Greg's filming this. Uh, one, of my, one of his favorite movies, I'll dob him in, is that great movie, Brother, Where Art Thou? There's a wonderful song in that movie, which I must have, it always encourages me, down to the river to pray. What does it say? As I went down to the river to pray, studying about the good old way, uh, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. It's a song about baptism. It's a song about new life. It's a song about, Lord, show us the way. And that is my prayer today, my prayer for you, prayer for us in the ministry. Lord, as we go down to the river, as we go down to the beach, as we live this life, Lord, show us the way. Provide a new way with a new hope that's firmly set in our hope with you. So take care. Uh, I wish you all the well. Uh, I'm missing profoundly not seeing you. Uh, the year has not turned out the way I and you thought it would. But make no mistake, our good Lord is still sovereign. Take care, brothers and sisters, and talk to you soon.